Hello, my name is Andy Wiggum and I'm here at Link 2022 with Rick DeGraff and we're going to have a brief discussion on the current state of uh, VTE treatment. So Rick, if I ask you first of all, um, what is the current state of play with DBT in Europe? Um, is it massively underdiagnosed, and what are our current problems in addressing this important issue? Well, you directly picked the correct uh, yeah. question, I think, Andrew, because that's what it's all about, isn't it? For, for now uh, years and years, we are looking for more awareness, and it's, uh, you know, we are doing it, we're treating the patients, but the patients get referred to us by general physicians that do not know that we can treat them that well, and that, that happens uh, in my country, I mean, I'm originally Dutch, that was in, in the Netherlands, it was like that. In Germany, it's, I don't know, in the UK, it's like that. It, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's, that's a massive problem. Yeah, awareness is still a huge issue. Absolutely. Yeah. So, but we're working on, on the awareness continuously, right? But, you know, talking about the treatment, what is your major challenge? Yeah. I think one of, the, one of the problems we see relates back to the awareness issue in that we know the traditional devices available to us have a limited window for effective treatment of acute DVT um, beyond two to three weeks that the clock becomes too organized and, our, and our, some of our currently available treatments are ineffective. As we know, a lot of referrals still come to us after two, three weeks, again, due to lack of awareness, lack of time. Um, and then there are other issues we have. I mean, this was highlighted in the UK with COVID. We had limited operating room time. We had limited bed availability. One of the traditional treatments has always been thrombolysis for acute DVT. That comes with significant bleeding risk to the patient and has a significant impact on the health economics of the hospital and that it needs ITU stay and one-to-one -one nursing. Um, and so we're really in need of solutions to address these issues, to enable us to treat patients who are referred late and to avoid this hemorrhagic or bleeding risk from, a, from the traditional thrombolytic mm. therapy. I agree completely with you and, and you know that's why I mean uh, we don't want to use lysis anymore no. do we? I mean definitely that was, that was a long time ago that I used lysis for the last time. Yeah. Now I know Rick you're a big adv advocate of interventional treatment for DBT. What's your mm. current preferred treatment modality and, and what are the reasons for this? Mm. Yeah we talked about the lysis right so that we don't want to do that anymore and, and I started out there with, you know 2009 we started with the thrombolysis and um, that's something that you definitely do not want to do you know to young patients even take the smallest risk you don't want to do that so um, you know and we went through all the devices out there right and my major problem was always I couldn't get all the thrombus out and that's the the, the major problem because residual thrombus thrombus that that's still left uh, behind that incurs a new, a new uh, thrombosis right so we do not want to do that so thankfully now I'm finally very confident that I have a device that takes out all the thrombus, right? So, and that's, that's the key thing, take all the thrombus out, right? And that's what we have now. Yeah, the clot retriever is a, a very effective device, enables us to clear the thrombus. I found a similar thing and, and limit potentially the amount of stenting we're doing in this young patient cohort, which we want to do. Yeah, we, we're talking about that for, for years, right? So we, we stenting, we have to stent chronic uh, stuff, right? But the acute, you do not want to stand residual thrombus, you want to stand the, 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 the cause of the thrombus, so maybe some kind of stenosis that's there that's causing the thrombus. But you want to take out all the thrombus and, and stand, only stand the lesion that causes the DVT in the first place. Yeah, I think we're in a position to do that successfully. Absolutely. So, Andrew, you just mentioned the, the clot retriever. Yeah. Uh, and we're talking about, you know, the, the, the two-week window. Do you think that clot retriever is only um, possible to use inside that window of two weeks? No, I mean, I think that's one of the principal advantages of the device is it's effective beyond two weeks, out beyond six weeks we've even found. Okay. Um, I would even say it's possibly more effective in that subacute phase because you get such good luminal clearance. Um, but now we have a device where we can treat the patient in that acute setting if we get them. If we don't get them, we can treat them at two weeks. If they're missed, for example, and not referred late, or the patient decides to pursue a conservative treatment option, we can still treat them in a delayed manner out to five, six weeks effectively. And I think that is the real game changer, if you like, in terms mm. of a device, that we have that range of treatment time available to us now. Yeah, that's a huge benefit. I see that as well, like that, because you know you get referrals really sometimes just too late yeah. you know we, we need that more uh, we need more awareness and and this is uh, yeah as you say a game changer thanks very much for talking today rick and we'll um, close our little discussion there